guys and welcome to the fish room. Today is another easy day for me in that I just have to do maintenance. And one of the things I like to do at least once a month is wage absolute war on duckweed. Now I'm not saying duckweed's all bad. It certainly has it applica its applications. And if you like it, that's all right with me. The problem I have is I have so many tanks that duckweed just takes over and it blocks the light from my other plants. So as I mentioned, once a month I go to war and I have a bunch of different strategies I use for collecting duckweed, but it's usually just manual labor. So I thought I'd take you guys along with me and <laughs> see what we get from all my tanks. So for some reason, some of my tanks get a lot more duckweed than others. And one of the obstacles I have is that since I don't use substrate in most of my tanks, a lot of my plants are floating which means duckweed gets entangled with them. And when duckweed gets entangled with a plant, you know, it can just multiply and multiply and multiply because it does so by division. So if you have one little scrap of duckweed left in your tank, you're guaranteed to have more. Now the cool thing about duckweed is that because it multiplies so readily and so easily, it's pretty good for nutrient export. The bad thing for me is that in my fish room it means it gets everywhere and I always worry about cross-contamination. So it's especially important for me to wage war in the tanks that are my quarantine tanks. So that's what I'm doing today, which means I'm going to go through a lot of nets. After I'm done with a net in a tank, I throw it on the floor to know it's dirty. Now this rack isn't too bad. And these two tanks are already done quarantine completely, as is this one. So I can use the same net and I'm just going to go along the surface and pull out any and all duckweed that I see. Now I know I'll never be completely successful, but a gal can dream and I can try. And I've managed to get rid of duckweed in quite a few of my tanks or at least for now. Now I've seen some pretty interesting uh, techniques for removing duckweed from shop vacuuming it to vacuuming at the surface. I do the vacuum at the surface one quite a lot. Um, the shop vac I would never do because there's so many little fish that I deal with. I like to be able to check my net first, make sure I'm not sucking anything up. Plus, then you've got to clean the shop vac. And so I tend to use nets. And I just go along and remove as much as I can. Coming back to the same tank over and over as duckweed that gets trapped on the surface floats back up. Because that's what it does. Now, in an ironic note, I find that the easiest way to get rid of duckweed completely is to accidentally overflow your tank all over the floor. All the floating plants are swept out. Now I wouldn't recommend that for those of you who don't have floor drains, but I've done it accidentally a few times and it's been very efficient. So this whole row has no duckweed. This one still has more. And again, like I said, I'm not really expecting to be successful here but just making a dent makes me feel better. All right, let's move over to this row. I'm gonna bring you guys with me. So this tank, I'm actually gonna leave it because that's where I'm breeding those Daisy's rice fish, but I'd like to remove it from that tank, that tank, that tank. This whole entire top row is just infested. Now the middle row is pretty much clear of it and the bottom row is pretty clear of it as well so I'm not sure what's special. So I'm not sure what's special about up there that it gets it but it sure has it. And then over on this side I have it on purpose in this tank because I'm breeding sunfish in there. I have it in purpose on purpose in this tank because I'm breeding or keeping the natives in there but I'll go around and if there's any other tank that has it, I will remove it now. So we'll start at that end. I'm also gonna be doing water changes, draining, siphoning, cleaning, that kind of stuff while we go. 
Now this tank is a shrimp tank, so I have to be especially careful when I'm netting it out that I don't take any of my little shrimp friends with them. It's another good reason to do this with a net. So usually what I'll do is I'll go through and scoop out all that I can get easily, let the tank settle down and come back for more. Random side note for you, one of the reasons I cut my hair short is because when I work in these top rows, I could never wear my mohawk up, so I never, I would never put it up, so it seems sort of silly to keep it when the only time I got to wear it up was when I was out. All right. I also try and wipe down my glass as I go, so that way I can try and keep the water spots a little bit under control. Doesn't usually work very well. So I've been working on breaking down a lot of tanks to reset them, including this one down here, which is a surprise for you guys at some point. You can see this tank is absolutely covered, so this is going to be a fun one, very rewarding anyway, to scoop the duckweed out of. Again, I just go right across the surface. You'll notice sometimes too that the duckweed gets trapped above the water line. And this is why we check our net. Little Indian hatchet tried to leave with the duckweed. So since the duckweed can get trapped above the water line, I just rub my finger all around the trim to knock it into the water column. Because again, if you, the more you leave behind, the more that grows back quickly. So I'll let this tank settle for a minute. I might take the opportunity to vacuum it as well while I'm up here. Now I could have used the drain ports for that one, but those particular fish are prone to getting sucked up, so I like to do them into a bucket. They just move so fast. I think I just caught another one. And that is much, much better. So I move on to the next one. And then again, because this is a shrimp tank, check my net very carefully. And there's a baby shrimp. So this is how much duckweed I got just from a couple of tanks. And I'll feed this to my chickens so it doesn't go to waste. And actually, if I had goldfish or other plant-eating species, I would feed it to them. But I don't, so the, to the chickens it is. is a particularly dingy one so I'm gonna do a really massive water change on it probably as much as 75% so I'm gonna start my siphon and just vacuum and vacuum and vacuum and vacuum this is a tank that's been running since the start of the fish room this was one of the first ones I set up and there is a ton of Malaysian driftwood in here and it seems like no matter what, it's always kind of dingy looking. So I'm just gonna let that tank drain and fill for a while. Uh, it'll end up being a few hundred percent water change. There's only like four fish in there. It's one I'm getting ready to, to switch up a bit, so I'm not particularly concerned about them. Um, and I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean up all my messes, because I have customers in a, starting in a couple hours. And it looks like a bomb went off down here again. So the worst part of war is always the cleanup. I've had to go through and clean glass, 
vacuum the carpet, sop up some water. And I'm just finishing up some water changes but you guys can see the status of the war. You don't see a whole lot of the duckweed around anymore. Which is absolute bliss to me. It's currently only overtaking the tanks I want it to. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my Instagram, follow me on Facebook, as well as stop by my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things now.